I believe he has something special for the Latino community, and we're going to be part of something big. Um, what it is, I don't know. But I, inside of my heart, I believe that something's going to happen. Maybe something great, a uh, revival, people getting back to Jesus. We now see Daddy Yankee, a big artist, uh, give to life his Jesus. Like I mentioned, a lot of people are coming back to, to God. I don't know what to say, bro. Uh, I just know that, that something's good is going to happen, and I'm part of it. And you guys also are part of it, too. So I am just feel blessed. That's, that's what I can say. We're all inspired by our human connection that arises when we share food with others. So what's on your heart becomes a hub for a truly heartfelt conversation. Tertulia, as they say in Spanish, fostering genuine bonds between individuals, creating that sense of community and connection. I'm Paul Jacobs, your podcast co-host, ready to inspire you by conversations that nourish the soul as we go beyond the plate. I'm Daniel Patino, welcoming you to join us for some truly inspiring tertulia. Get ready to satisfy that craving for connection and inspiration as we dive into time. Topics that aren't only broaden your perspective, but also deepen your understanding of lives of families in Latin America, the Caribbean, or even in your own backyard. So wherever our conversations take us, come along for the ride and let's go beyond the plate together. All right, so I want to share something really quick for, with you guys uh, from lifehacker.com. Uh, this is for our early morning my risers. We're talking about 3.30 in the morning. We're talking about being nurses. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, a, probably a, a, a policeman. Garbage Firefighters. Men. Garbage San men. Wait, wait, wait. Sanitation workers. Sanitation sorry. workers. I'm sorry. Yes, that's good. And as well as radio people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have man. a radio background, as you uh, may not know. Uh, and doing uh, morning shows is is something not for the... <sighs> Uh, young at heart, or you right. know, it's for the wicked, as, right. I, as I would say. Uh, and sometimes coffee would be your best friend, right? Of course. But we're talking about coffee Monday through Friday, three times a day, and we're talking about. Is there and, something wrong with that? No, it's not. Uh, well, <laughs> down here in South Florida, Cuban coffee is a very popular choice that keeps us energized, right? Yeah. Uh, but sometimes you need a break because a cafecito three times a day is is almost not good Again, for your heart. Again, is there right? anything wrong with that? Uh, it's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Not with me. But your heart would say different. No. Oh well. And, uh, yeah. and here's actually three ways I want to share with you to stay awake without caffeine. I'm a, from Colombian background, so coffee for the morning, midday, snack, uh, right before bed. It's everywhere. But sometimes I was like, you know what? There's got to be an alternative. Yeah. Uh, our first one here is drink water and eat snacks. Yeah. yeah. It sounds simple, right? Sometimes we get dehydrated because, you know, we just go on without drinking water. Right. Obviously, we need to drink water, and that yeah. causes fatigue. So stay hydrated. A healthy snack, too, like an apple or peanut right. butter can right. boost your energy. And sometimes... Apple with peanut butter, I recommend it. Hmm. That's up to you. Exercise. You know, move around a little bit. Move for a few minutes. That will wake you up. I know sometimes we used to do it after a long shift. You start doing jumping jacks in the <laughs> studio. Jacks. There'd be, yeah, in just to stay awake. Work. Okay. Just to stay awake. Oh, well, I get it. I get it. As a, as a morning show prep guy, you, you right. have to put together something exciting, something moving for the morning yeah. rush, right? You, you're Some of our, our fans are looking for some inspiration, right. looking for some, something to get them up and going for the rest of the day. Right. So, yeah, you got to be energetic too. So, exercise, move around for a few minutes. <laughs> and if all fails, take a power nap oh, power nap i love power naps 10 yes. to 20 minutes is the the Don't range need. you can't get anywhere from there so that nap will recharge you without making you groggy so uh take that with you i know for all our folks right now they're listening day morning this will help you throughout the day and night so uh, listen to if, and, and here's the deal if if our listening audience actually has a few energy hacks mm -hmm. let's let's hear it you go to foodforthepoor.org slash podcast click the best bite I w i'd love to hear some of our audience tell us their life hacks to keep awake right That's, i mean it would be great i mean you know here's the deal like i remember in college every college student drinks coffee right oh yeah but not me i didn't drink coffee but guess what i actually had a class in my graduate studies it was a blow-off class international cuisine <laughs> it was a cool professor it was at tuesday night and Literally every night or every Tuesday, we would cook foods from different, uh, you know, parts of the world. Okay. Until one day we came in and Chef Moran says, nope, all of a sudden, all I saw was three coffee machines and a bunch of coffee beans. Were you upset? Because you're like, oh, man. Yeah, because I, I was skipped like, lunch for thinking my professor was going to provide something well, good right, for me. Right, because no. after Today's class, coffee. we right. would eat, right? So yeah. all of a sudden, it's all this coffee. Man, we made coffee that entire episode. I learned everything I ever wanted to know about coffee. 
about decaffeination, decaffeination methods, uh, learned about French roast, Colombian Supremo. Ay, mm. ay, ay, que rico sabor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that good. That's a real coffee. Then I started drinking coffee. But we're not here to talk about coffee. No, not yet. We're here to talk about something a little more exotic. Okay. Danny, I got a question for you. True. What would you say if I told you, just picture in your mind. All right, I'm closing my eyes. I live in a coastal Caribbean community, right? Mm, the waves crashing, okay. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Sun rises crashing. over the warm Atlantic Ocean. Mm. And then on the other side, I see the beautiful mountains of oh. central Puerto Rico. Oh. Okay? You get where I'm coming from so ocean, far. Now you're adding mountains? I'm adding mountains. Okay. Ooh. Beautiful stretches of Palm Beach beaches, palm tree beaches. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just getting tongue-tied because I'm, like, just dreaming about being know. there, right? Miles and miles. The weather so sweet, Donnie. Weather so sweet. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to lick the stamp if I mail you a letter. I just got to wave it in the air, the humidity. <laughs> I put it on top of the envelope Amen. and send it to you. Oh. Oh. Now, I'm here. I'm, I mean, can you see this, right? I, yeah, I'm feeling I, it. I'm Smelly. on the beach, chilling, my beach blanket, my cold Malta India. Mm. Que rico, no? Extra ice. Extra ice. Yeah. Day. Where could I move better than that? You tell me. One place. I, I dare you to find one place on this planet Earth better than what I've just described right Mountains, there. sunrises over the beach, miles and miles of... Um, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a better place. I don't have a better place for you right now. I got one. Okay. How about Philadelphia? <laughs> ah. Uh, <laughs> wait, uh, wait, wait. Do okay. you understand? <laughs> Do you understand the winters mid... 40s. I got. I, mm. I looked this up. Okay. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I 95 traffic. I 95 traffic. Oh, yeah. there you go. No time coast. to think. It gives you time to think. Time to ponder a lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot of pondering mm -hmm. because you're a lot of pondering in traffic with no coastline. Mm, no. Public pools. No well, beach. Well, public pools are good. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have a friend, you swim with one yes. automatically. Yes, if you like fungus in your, between your toes. Mm. Yes, they're good. That's the extra on top. <laughs> and then, of course, <laughs> <laughs> the best thing that ever came out of Philly. Of course. Not the cheesesteak. No. Sadiel Castro. Mm -hmm. Sadiel Castro. <laughs> Sadiel. Hey. Hey, guys. How are you? <laughs> I like I Did love, we do an, I like, <laughs> did we do an I accurate uh, assessment of Philadelphia? Uh, well, Philadelphia, uh, for the stuff that you mentioned um, about cafecito, yes, we, we can get that, Malta, India. Mm. Uh, no mountains, no. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a lot of cold, uh, cold weather over yeah. there, and sand, a lot sand of, doesn't survive in cold weather. Yeah, no. yeah, and a lot of uh, snow shoveling. You know, mm. that's that's part of the stuff that I have to deal with when I was in Philadelphia. So, eh, um, but I like the Malta India too. So uh, I can get. And find any Malta India in any store because all the bodegas in Philly has Malta India, ha, Coco Rico, Cola Champagne, sí. ha, all the goodies and and all the sweet stuff that we get, can find in, in, that we can find in Puerto Rico too. So I'm <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I like the way that you just uh, say it. All the mountains and the coffee. Well, See, I, that's so what like, it is. I, if somebody yeah. hasn't been to Puerto Rico. That's yeah. it. Uh, we just put you there for free. You didn't have to travel. You, you, you just miss, um, miss uh, mentioned Cafe Yaucono. That's one of the the part of the uh, the the coffee that that we drink over there. The Cafe Yaucono It's good it. too. Okay, so you, you have to, to taste it. All right, that's on the list. That's uh, Paul. Uh, that's part of your list of extensive coffee tasting. So please put list. it on the list. Put it on the list. Sadiel, bienvenidos. Welcome to Beyond the Plate here with my co-host Paul, and um, we just. I'd love to have you here today because of, of the person you are. Uh, and I think the person you're going to be in a few years and the person you've become in the last few years. So uh, syndicated show in New York, Miami, Houston. Houston, where you call home. Co-host yes. con la bella y talentosa Mirka de Llanos. She's great. Yes. I'm going to give you a yes, minute yes. there. If anybody doesn't recognize that name, I'm going to give you a minute to go Google it. Uh, it's worth con la talentosa yes. y bella Mirka de Llanos. You worked your way up all the way to program director, mm -hmm. which is a very, very important role in uh, many radio stations and pick any radio station. And to have a program director, that's kind of like your captain, right? Your field general leading you to yes. the, the good programming, the yeah. stuff you want to hear. And you are an award winner 
also. I think that's on your profile, right? I think I saw it on your <laughs> I saw it in your social media. Award winner, Edward R. Yes. Morrow. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Morrow Awards, it's presented to radio, television, digital news, um, just honors, just, just a prestigious honor to wow. get that award. And you are now a recipient of one of them and a go-to guy at Vida Unida. That's like the beginning of like Radio EGOT. You know, I mean, <laughs> to get an yeah. Edward R. Where can you go from an Edward R. Murrow Award, an Oscar, an Emmy? What else do uh -huh, you need? Yeah, Tony. It's, it's a, a home wow. run. You just you're part of the. You're working on that. <laughs> when triple play, you're working under triple play. Um, a a good a good partner, a good fiance, papa de sus chicos, a good father to to puppy Kimball, oh, yeah. to Frenchie, yeah, yeah. que también yeah. Kimball, he fought, as you may not know, uh, Sadiel and Kimball fight crime uh, uh, in the middle of the night. You know, he's the one that saves Houston from all the crime with his his pet. <laughs> and, and, you know, Batman has Robin, you have Frenchie. Uh, you have Kimball, to so Frenchie. Did I leave anything out, Sadiel? Um, well, um, you mentioned everything there, and yes. Uh, well, one thing is uh, I was a news reporter for a couple of years, like for like two years, maybe uh, experience that God let me enjoy. And that's why I have that, that award, the Edward Moore, R. Moore award and for um, reader 13 national t TV. Um, it's a, a blessing for me having that award because um, people that are in the, in the news industry for more than 20 years or 15 years, trying to get one of those and just having like a one year on doing news, I have the the blessing to have one. So it, it was kind of weird for me. I never expect to get that award. That's one of the things. Um, I did what I did just cause I love doing um, anything that has to do with broadcasting, radio, TV. And that's one of the things that I'm um, thank God every day. Uh, he gave me this opportunity of work and what I love and this radio, music, TV, or all the opportunities that God gave me. And I think you, you mentioned everything. Some, some of those things I, <laughs> I even forgot about it. So thank you. Thank you for guys for letting me be here with you guys and beyond the plate. The good thing is we all are have black color. So oh, yeah. we match. We're matching. So you That's good. Fun. I only need my bow tie or something <laughs> like <laughs> to match Paul, mi amigo Pablo Jacobo. <laughs> so, yo, see, okay, by the way, we need to let everybody know because obviously okay. we're here in Hispanic Heritage Month. I am with, I am with Sadiel Castro, Daniel Patino, Epa. and now I have officially changed my name. To Pablo Jacobo. Pablo Jacobo. See, sí, see, sí. Pablo Jacobo, because you, your, your name is Paul Jacobs, but we, mm -hmm. we kind of make a switch there. I asked Chad GPT, and they, the name is Pablo Jacobo. So. Pablo Jacobo. I love and it. For this, Pablo Jacobo con adobo. adobo. Con adobo. Like our, our yeah. Benji, yeah. That's, 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 that's that sounds good. great. Pablo Jacobo <laughs> con adobo. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you got it so, spot there. Yeah, yeah, so yo. The slogan with the <laughs> slogan and everything. <laughs> que sabor. Sadiel, so, you've been around God for, I think, all your life. Uh, and up to this point yes. now, not all your life, just from being a, a pastor's kid growing up in the church, God has been there. And I think it's, it's, he finally revealed himself a little later on to mm. you in life. He's always there, right? I, I, he's always looking, he's always looking out for you. Uh, is there something now that since you were a behind the scenes guy uh, and pr pretty much through your radio career, at one point, mm -hmm. do you say, this is me and then this is God? At what point did you figure that out? Well, since I was a kid, I, I loved radio. My dad used to have a, a radio um, spot, and they, they invite him all the time uh, in the radio. And he take take me with him. And when he was on the on the studio, he left me in the production studio with the other guys. So, so I was a young guy, and he don't want me to run around the place. So I started looking at all those buttons, all, all this equipment. And, and see how they make that magical sound in that studio. And I fought in love since day one. Um, I always want to be a behind the scenes guy, like you mentioned. And, but for some reason, God always pushed me to be the guy uh, to do the morning show, to be on camera, to be on, on the front of the, of the thing, you know, and, and I don't like it, to be honest. I, I like to be behind <laughs> the scenes. I, I want to be the guy 
to give directions, they have the ideas and let all the people take the, you know, the, the spot to, to right. be the, the main guy. But for some reason, God always moved, moved me to that direction. And to be honest, to this point, I get nervous every time that I have to go to some place and be on stage or have to be in front of a camera. Like before here, I have to kind of like uh, pray and kind of do my breath exercise and everything so I can be calm and normal because I'm not like this, to be honest. But God has a purpose and I have to listen to his voice. And I find out about that basically a few months ago. Um, the, that's what God wants me in, in, in the front of the, of the spot, you know, like be the, the guy that people know, be the, the, the person that represent what he wants me to, to talk about. And I don't know, man, this has been a blessing. And, and for so many years, I'm trying to be behind the scenes, but he want he wants something different and I have to follow whatever he wants. But wait a second. The behind-the-scenes guy, he just made a very good argument for wanting to be the behind-the-scenes guy, but you have compiled a list. Yeah. Well, I, let, let, let's share with him that list. We're talking way. to Sadiel Castro, award-winning Sadiel Castro, all right? I'm just going to coin that now just oh, yeah. to, to, to help you. I know you don't – and I, I, you, I feel like you're one of those people that don't really take compliments very well, right? I, I And I say it because I'm one of those, right? I, that, exactly. See, I yeah. just gave him a compliment, and he just kind of shrugged. I don't know how to take a compliment either. My wife tells me that all the time. She goes, you look great. And I just scrunch up and I just want to hide for some reason. But it's just, it's the personality in you. I feel uh, humble is the first word that comes to me. And I think it's the only word that I need. And uh, I, yes, we, we put a list together here. This, uh, this is a list of famous acts to sell out Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to list a couple people here. If you recognize them, that's great. If not, mm -hmm. I'll give you time to look them up. Our first one is Billy Joel. Oh. The piano man. The piano man himself. Yeah, of course. Right? Uh, Elton John. Rocket Another man. piano man. Rocket man. <laughs> rocket. Oh, Got rocket it. man. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Bruce Springsteen. The boss. That's another man. That's right. Wow. Those are uh, big heavy hitters. These are heavy hitters. And 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 batting, not, uh, well, last but not least, yeah. Sadiel Castro. Sold out. <laughs> Sadiel <laughs> Castro has sold out Madison Square Garden. What's the next step, Sadiel, <laughs> for the name change? Uh, are, are you going to call it now Madison Sadiel Garden? Is that the next step? <laughs> because nothing is stopping you, and God is not letting you sit down for a minute or two. So I think that's the next step. If you ask me, I will say any nothing. But if we ask God, He probably have a bunch of stuff in His list that He want me to to do and to to be in. Who knows? Maybe one day winning another award, or maybe be in a movie, or maybe be on a TV show. Who knows? And inside of my heart right now is trying to be high, the highest possible, but in God's heart is something different and whatever he has for me. I just learned uh, the past couple of months that I just had to say, okay, God, let me do whatever you want. Let's do it. And I don't complain anymore and just follow whatever he wants me to do. And I don't know, man, man. You left me speechless because I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> what did so, you tell What did you tell God when he told you I need you to go on stage in front of thousands of people right. at Madison Square Garden? What did you tell him? Well, I make a little prayer, like twenty second prayer. Say, God, please call myself. I'm a lot. Of, I'm nervous. Give me peace in my heart and put the the right words in my mouth. I don't want to say something stupid. I don't want to make you know. I don't want to screw things up and please give me peace i'm shaking but once that i put my foot in that stage and i start talking everything goes away i feel like i'm i'm on the place you know and i start i feel like god has my back and he has his arm around my 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 shoulder and say go ahead and mm -hmm. and that's it that's what i do i just ask god for peace and to put the right words in my mouth so i can say whatever he wants me to say you know, in the time that we've gotten to know you, Sadiel, we mm -hmm. understand you because we understand your relationship with God. And something you said to us kind of told us a lot about how God is using you in this season. That mm -hmm. you you mentioned how God could have started Vida Unida anytime he wanted to do it. But he started mm -hmm. it now in this season when you are seeing radio decline, but in Hispanic radio, in the Latino market, Right. It's mm -hmm. it's it's sky. I mean, it's skyrocketing. Right. You've seen nothing yes. but growth. So, OK, so I have to understand. 
understand and for our audiences, how do you interpret that, that God is literally growing Hispanic radio and growing your part in that through Vida Unida? Wow. I believe there is something is happening or something is going to happen or is um I don't know how to say this word in English. Um it's called avivamiento. I don't know if Danny can help me with a, that word in Sp in English. Avivamiento is like a like a, this emotions and people getting more close to God and cuz for the past couple of years I especially when I was living in Philadelphia and living in, in, in Florida, um, I see the, 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 our generation getting very far from God. Yeah. Like revival people, is what we're looking for. Revival. Revival. Yeah. Revival. A revival. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and lately, I don't know if you guys see social media, how all these concerts, all these people in, in, the, in college, re, this revival and coming back and every, everybody mm -hmm. likes giving their life to Jesus Christ. I'm being seen in Instagram. So many actors, artists, people, very famous, like Hulk Hogan, for example, and people that are giving their lives to God now. And, and it's like a, everything is changing. Like we, we see this revival again. I believe um, like radio, when I'm saying radio is going down, it's not like it's disappearing because uh, the concept is still there. For example, this mm -hmm. podcast, this is radio. Right. Even even though it's not going through an FM or AM station, it, the, the concept is is the same. We just add in a camera. We just add in a um, uh, backgrounds with good quality cameras and pictures and stuff like that. So... I believe God has a purpose. Something is going to happen or he needs the people get together and praise him more or something's going to happen that he let this happen in this time. And it's, it's very weird because this can start, uh, this radio station, Vida Unida, mm -hmm. it started like a 10 or 20 years ago. But nobody really wanted to spend the money to, to do that. And now we're are in more than 15 cities. If you go to a website at uh, vidonida.com and you go to how to listen to us, mm -hmm. you're going to see all the cities. It's, we, we like spread out and in, in, in around almost 15 cities and we, we want to continue growing. And I believe he has something special for the Latino community. And we're going to be part of something big. Um, what it is, I don't know. But I, inside of my heart, I believe that something's going to happen. Maybe something great, a uh, revival, people getting back to Jesus. We now see Daddy Yankee, a big artist, uh, give to life his Jesus. Like I mentioned, a lot of people are coming back to, to God and, and live behind their careers, live behind the money, be, live behind the uh, those concerts. And now doing it for for God and and I don't know what to say, bro. Uh, I just know that, that something's good is going to happen, and I'm part of it. And you guys also are part of it too. So I'm just feel blessing. That's that's what I can say. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting because when we we had a chance to meet you at uh, the Momentum 24 conference, and mm -hmm. when you were presenting, there was a big presentation on the the state of Hispanic radio, there was mm -hmm. there was a comment made, and I think all of us took notice of the fact that the Hispanic community now feels that there is in, they've been included, they have been given an equal opportunity, they've been given a distribution of a radio platform on a FM platform, which mm -hmm. is huge, because now there's promotions, there's an investment mm -hmm. made in the Hispanic community. Do you want to talk about that? That investment that's being made in the Hispanic community. Yes. Um, we're going back like the what we talked a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. Before nobody think that we uh, radio somebody gonna spend a lot of money and buy a big sick no radio station for a, to to create a, a Spanish Christian station, and the money was a lot. Talking about millions of dollars to purchase a signal in Miami, a 
Signal in New York City, you know, that's the top number one market for radio mm -hmm. and costs a lot of money. And now God let a ministry, La Hope Media Group, find the found the, the money. No, no, because because we have it. People donate the money. People right. from their hearts say, look, here, here's the money and purchase those stations and and <sighs> I will say again, I don't even know what to say about it because it's something that, that to this point, I, I'm speechless about. Mm -hmm. But n what I know is the Spanish community feel like we think of them. Yeah. Que pensamos en ellos, sí. que yeah, we, yeah. We, we take the F word, we make the step and do it. And it was difficult. Because years ago, if you're trying to get a station in, in New York City, you probably have to have like $20 million to push one signal. Um, back in the days, a Spanish station just have an AM or low power station. Mm -hmm. They play maybe five songs or three songs per hour, and you have a bunch of different pastors to rent space. And it's kind of like a broker shows. Mm -hmm. And now having this platform, there is 100% music. I would say 95, because the other 5%, okay, the DJ gives some updates and stuff like that. But the, the main thing is the music. And it's, it's been a blessing. That's, that's, you're going to hear me on the entire podcast saying it's a blessing. Because I don't, and to this time, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Right. I'm asking God every day, God, what, what, what happened? What, what you want? This is amazing. It's good news after good news after good news. And and to this point, I don't know the answers, but it's amazing. That's what I can say. It's you been know. a blessing. <laughs> uh, has it been a blessing? No, just kidding. Of course. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Wait a second. But when, uh -huh. we, when we talked to you before, I remember mm -hmm. one of the things that stood out to me was you said, I'm waiting to see which way God will go next, right? Mm -hmm. And immediately as you said that, what brought up brought to my mind, okay, Danny, get ready. Are you sitting for this? Uh, hold on a second. Yes, I'm all right. sitting now. All right. My, <laughs> I'm on Duolingo, lección 14. So Ooh. get ready for this, oh. Sadiel. When oh, you okay. said, I'm waiting to see which way God will go next, mm -hmm. immediately I thought of this scripture. I'm going to read it in Spanish first. Proverbios 18, verso 16. Capítulo 18, verso 16. Nueva versión internacional. Con regalos se abren todas las puertas y se llega a la presencia de gente importante. For our... English-speaking audience, mm -hmm. that's like a lot of you. <laughs> Proverbs uh -huh. eighteen sixteen in the in the NIV version. Or I'm going to read it in the New King James version in English. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Oh, that was great. What is now? I want to talk wow. about you. What does that mean to you? As you're a big part of this blessing in the Hispanic community in Hispanic radio, more media. Oh, well, you say con regalos we give. Yeah. That's what our listeners are doing. They giving us a gift, so we can continue growing and continue give them the this product to them. And God put the, the in their heart of so many wealth people. They they have the money. They have the organizations. They have businesses. The they they say I don't want that you mention that I do this. I just do it because I want to give. God puts that in my heart and and. Like you say, with, with regalos, with gifts, we can get to that to that place, to that point that we want to get. The the gods want us to go. So I just happy that God is touching a lot of wealth people, a lot of people that they have businesses. That God also um, bless them with this huge opportunity that they have a good business and and they are growing to and giving a little piece of that um, blessing to us. And we also, once that we get that, we also want to give gift to another people so we they can find about Bidonida or they can have a, another way to grow their, their organizations. We partnered with people like Compassion International, people like hopefully with you guys who follow the part in the future. 
to do stuff like that and and help uh, to continue uh, help other uh, organizations growing too, like we are doing now. So yeah, I'm going to bring it back to to award winning Edward Moro award winning Sadiel Castro. All mm -hmm. right, so you mentioned for somebody else, and I'm going to bring it back to Sadiel because I'm going to read this once again. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. You started off in radio, like you said, way back when, even when you were a kid, you were in the control room with everyone else. But then later on in life, you became the man behind the microphone, uh, blessing uh, the audience Monday through Friday, and I'm pretty sure on the weekend sometimes <laughs> throughout yes. your career. So I'm, I'm talking about you. Your gift made room for yourself, and it brought you before everyone in Miami, Houston, New York, not small markets in radio. These are markets that, you know, talk to 3 million people or plus on a daily basis. So your gifts have brought you to this point. And yet, and still, I don't, I haven't heard anything of like, no, oh, you know, it struggled here and there. It's just been, eh, I just happened to stumble good because point. God was there. And you believe in God on a daily, a lot, which is good. But at the same time, it's God at one point, I think spoke to you and said, believe in yourself because this is where it's going to get you. And it's shown you a path and you followed with, I don't think without any uh, kicking or screaming, right? It's just been, my talent got me here. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And now I'm going to be the front man, the people who are, are you know, the person everybody's going to look up to when it comes to inspiration on a daily basis. What do you say to that? Look, I've been doing radio for more than 20 years. Um, at one point in my life, I say enough is enough. I don't want to do radio anymore. I want to, I want to quit this. I want to just do something else. And God moved, moved me to TV. I was behind the scenes creating a platform called Tampaoy.com. It's, it's basically a news uh, website in Spanish for the Tampa community, Tampa Bay area. Um, God gave me the blessing that I, I win that award there, the Edward Mooder Award, like I say, year after. Hmm. Um, I was saying, i never going back to radio anymore. This is what I love. I love to be behind the scenes. Next day, hey, Saria, we need to open a news uh, newscast on the TV. We need you to put your suit and be on TV. I'm like, what? Uh, I'm not ready for this. Yes, you have to do it. So I did it. Wow. And I was thinking like, why? Why? I was nervous. Like I mentioned, I was checking. I did it. But I, I, what I was, I mean, what, lo que no sabía, and sorry that I go, cause some, I'm going to forget some uh, words in English. So I'm going to be Spanglish here. Okay. Lo, que yo no, lo que yo no sabía era que Dios me estaba preparando para algo grande. Y él me estaba transformando. He was transform myself to something different because he wanted me doing this, you know, mm -hmm. Vida Unida. So from that, he moves me to the opportunity came. And when I, when I see the, in the website, somebody sent me like a recommendation, you, you fit, you are a good fit for this job. Mm -hmm. And when I read it, say, okay, confidential Spanish Christian radio station. And in Houston, uh, blah, 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 blah. And when I start reading the description, it was like talking about me. Wow. The entire thing, it was like, this is me. And I looked to the, to the skies and said, God, if you want me there, I'm going to apply. <laughs> You're going to give me that job. Send me a sign and play. Yeah. Send me a yeah. sign and say yes. And I apply. Six months passed. Wow. Six months later, mm -hmm. I was in the newsroom creating the, the things for the TV and blah, blah, blah. And I received a call. Hey, Sariel, are you looking? We want to interview you for the job in the, in the radio station. I'm like, radio station? I, I don't apply for another radio station. Oh, it was six months ago. I'm like, <laughs> oh, you took about the Christian radio station? I talked to the lady. Her name is Ana Herrador. And if she's seeing this, this um, podcast, she's going to be laughing because that, that's how I, I react. I was like, oh, this was so long time ago. 
Say <laughs> yes, but now we 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 ready to hire somebody. So I start doing the process, and at the end, I get the job. I left everything behind. I trust God. I say, let's go there. I moved to Houston, and now look, all this this happening. Now we're in sixteen cities, and we are in Miami, New York, and. I was behind the scenes uh, as a PD and co-host. When I say behind the scenes, I was I wasn't the major character for the for the radio station. Mm -hmm. If you see the the promotions, it's only Mirka picture. I don't want to be part. I always want to be behind the scenes. But now God wants me to be the face and be part of the face with Mirka and pick. Things change around, and now they want me to concentrate to be like the uh, co-host for the morning show with Merca de Llanos. And, yeah. and now we have a new program director. This has this been awesome. It's been a blessing for me because he's he believes in me, and he's given me all this. Oh, um, I don't know how to say He He kind of me está ayudando and, yeah. and cheers. Like, he's like, on, he on, cheers boy. you on. He's on your yeah, side. Yeah. He's part of the team. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's making me be better every day, and God is mm -hmm. using him to push me to be better. And now, uh, good things are coming in the next couple months. It's top secret. I don't want to talk too much about it, but um, following whatever God wants. I, I get on the point of my life that I surrender to him. I say, God, do whatever you want with my life. <laughs> yeah, you did a long time ago. Yeah, I, I it tell, sounds like you did a long time ago. I tell him, take my free will. I don't oh, want yeah. it. Tell me whatever you want, and I'm gonna do it. Oh yeah. And since that point, he started moving things around, and I'm just following. Wow. Every day is something new. Every day somebody tell me something new, and I'm like, I don't even get surprised anymore. I'm like, okay, let's do it. Because I know it's God behind all this and is part of his plan mm -hmm. to this point we don't know what is the plan i'm just gonna trust him and do it that's what i know i'm gonna that's continue to trust him and do it so it's been a blessing hispanic group Hispanic Group is an advertising agency focused in the U.S. Hispanic market that specializes in customized media solutions for businesses. It sure does. Desde estrategias de redes sociales hasta publicidad en medios tradicionales. Ofrecen soluciones personalizadas y creativas adaptadas para alcanzar sus objetivos de marketing. All tailored to the diverse and rapidly growing segments of the Hispanic population across 42 Hispanic markets in the U.S. and Latin America, huh? Wow, you get all the great lines, hey. but they use their cultural expertise to create strategies to deliver efficient results. Hispanic Group! Lleva tu marca al corazón de la comunidad hispana. Take your brand to the heart of the Hispanic community. Hispanic Group. Their expertise lies in reaching the Hispanic market, leveraging its rich multiculturalism. Mm -hmm. Hispanic Group combines innovation, mm -hmm. cultural insight, mm -hmm. and strategic collaboration to drive what? tangible results for their clients. I agree with everything you just said. Now, for more information, uh -huh. you can visit their website. Where? Guess where? Hispanicgroup.net. Okay. That's Hispanicgroup.net or... I'll say it in Spanish. Hispanicgroup.net. Once again, welcome back. Today we are celebrating El Mes de la Herencia Hispana, celebrating Hispanic culture all month long. Y aquí hoy con Sadiel Castro... And uh, as an organization, uh, like Paul was just mentioning, Food for the Poor, it, our name is often misunderstood. Uh, we're not just food, okay? Our, our mission mm -hmm. lies in alleviating poverty and transforming lives. And one of the many, Amen. one of the many ways we accomplish this is through life-saving nutrition, uh, especially for the most vulnerable, right? Y una de las muchas formas que logramos esto es a través de la nutrición que salva vidas, especialmente. Como acabo de decir, para los vulnerables. Now, has aprovechado tu plataforma, Sadiel, para llegar a las comunidades de América Latina como Honduras y, y ayudar a los niños a sobrevivir. How, how would you describe the poverty, which you've seen so far, which you've heard so far? How would you describe the poverty and health needs of children in Latin America y, como dije, por ejemplo, en Honduras? Sometimes we take, take things for the for grand, granted. I don't know if that's it, right? Eh, yeah. Tomamos las cosas como si no fuera... Nada, costaría nada, right? Granted, for sure. Yeah. We have water in a house. We have we have a refrigerator. Sorry. 
Um, we have AC, air conditioner. We have a car. We have we go to our closet and we have clothes. We have a laundry in our house. But when you see those people in, in South America, Central America, like El Salvador, Honduras, and, and Jamaica, and they don't not all of them have that. Some people even have a, a roof. Some people, their houses are made from cardboard. And I, not my, not personally, because I, I, I wasn't go to, I, I wasn't in, in those trips. And this year, um, we have, we, we are going to go, sorry, next year. But this year, um, my team go to El Salvador and we see the pictures, the videos. I was watching a couple of the videos of uh, Mr. Beast uh, partnered with you guys and helped to build houses in Jamaica, I believe, if, if, not, if I'm not wrong. Right. Yeah. And, and he did a wonderful job and, and see the people, how they, they, the faces when they receive the house. And uh, some people receive um, just a bag with food or just to have the opportunity to praise God in a place with AC you know, with air conditioner or, or have a motorcycle or a bicycle, mm. stuff like that. You know, uh, when I see those people that don't have all the stuff and they get so happy when somebody gives a little bit, it's amazing. And, and it's been, it, I think that's part of the mission that God has in his plans for this station is helping others and, and not only bringing music and have a, funny morning show or whatever it's it's those stuff and one of the things that made me to do this interview with you guys is because i'm very happy for for the stuff that you are, uh, guys are doing in, in the community and how you guys are helping people in in necessidad mm -hmm. people that need that they need that help and and it, i just feel blessed to be part of it and See those videos of people how they live in poverty, touch my heart. I was I was showing my my prom director um, uh, Tony Luna the videos for for uh, Jamaica the houses for the you guys partnered with um with Mr Beast and we left crying through that of when we see all that. My eyes was full of tears watching the how they feel when they give the keys of the house some guys receiving so many blessings through your your organization and i just know that god has a plan and what i know he handpicked us to be part of it and it's like i say it's in a it's been a blessing <laughs> it's been a it's blessing. Been a blessing. That's my, it's my a blessing. life. It's a life changing experience. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, if you watch it through your TV screen at home, if you live it, yeah. Uh, they're on boots on the ground. Um, it's and it's something that touches your heart and you you tear up because there's that's the connection. That's mm -hmm. you feel yourself there and and I think uh, I'm I'm my Colombian my background is Colombian, and every time I would go to Colombia to visit my grandma, I mean there wasn't a block that I didn't see somebody with their hand out right. Um, so seeing these people on a daily basis go through the struggles, being out in the elements, not having what you have, you want to give everything off your back to give to them, right? But you, that's not that's a one day solution, and 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 I know you're part of a bigger a bigger picture. And again, we're gonna Amen. we're gonna reference God because God's putting you in that position to be the the game changer, right? To be that changer in not only one person's life, many, because you you advocate for change, and that doesn't apply. To yeah. one person, it can be mm -hmm. it can be one person at a time, but it right. doesn't apply to just one person, which is great because you also got to think about yourself. If you're going to change others, you might want to change yourself. So I want to get into uh, your change in your own way. You had your own, Sadiel. Uh, you had your own life changing experience, right? Well, I'm going to just give you some numbers, and you just tell me what I'm talking about. 380 pounds back in 2012. Oh, Where are yes. you now? Where are you now? I'm in two. 47 now? 247. And you're 5'3, right? You said? I no, you're I'm 6'6. Six, six. <laughs> no. You're 5'2. I'm, right? I'm, I'm, so? I'm not a chaparrito. <laughs> I'm 6'2. Uh, yeah. I'm 6'2. Six, six two. Six two. Six two. Wow. I'm in 246. I'm continuing on losing weight. Uh, I, about, and one time I was 6'6 uh, six, six XL large. Like 6X large. I don't know how to say that in English. 
Hey, you said 6XL, 6XL shirt. 6XL, right? So it's 6XL. XL, I've never seen I've I don't, XXL. I've never seen that in the store. Yeah. No, it's not yeah. in a store. I used to purchase them uh, or online or I used to go to a store for big and tall. Wow. Mm -hmm. And and man, for me to wear a shirt, it was uh it was difficult to find clothing. It was very difficult. Um I get diabetes, uh I get um a lot of health health issues, sleep apnea, uh my the doctor told me, look, if you don't do something, you don't going to last for 10 more years or five more years. You have to do something with your life. So I I take the initiative or, or do a life changing and I lost, I got down to 225. The only reason why I get a little higher back was because um, I get a car accident and they have to put some uh, steroid shots in my bag and some um, cortisone shots. And that kind of made me get back my, my way back. And that's another story because God saved my life in that car accident. And it was a miracle. I almost died that day. And what happened? Um, I was on my way to Fort Myers to visit my parents. And uh, a guy, probably drunk or sleeping, hit the car, mm -hmm. and the seventy-five and the I seventy-five um, I don't how you call freeway, mm -hmm. um, and he hit the car in a corner, so the car starts spinning around, not not flipping, spinning, and I don't know how I managed to move the wheel. And by seconds, I find to move to the left, to the grass, you know, in the highway, I was like a part of that grass and a semi truck passed by inches and almost hit the car. You're like, man, and you feel the move of the car because it was very close. And even the, the mirror on the passenger side broke. And I just was like, oh my God. I almost died here, but God give me, I don't know how, give me a something that I was seeing everything. I was looking back, moving the car. It felt like slow motion for me. I feel like everything go like a very slow motion. And I was able to move the car and be in a moment, the save the life of me and the people that was in the car. And, and that isn't, experience that touched my life and I gratitude of God to because he saved my life and the people that was with me in the car. My my son was there. And wow. thank God um yes I have some pain and I have some issues in my back. But that reminds me every time that I have a back pain or something reminds me that God saved my life my life that day. So I prefer to have that back pain. Because every day it's I remember wow. that accident and I remember that God saved my life. So it's that little scar reminds you you survived in battle, right? <laughs> yeah. So yep. and now that you have a driver, you don't have to worry about things like that. You are an Edward Moore <laughs> Award winner. Uh, I think you're at this point. You God, God said, get a driver. Is He's it, like, you know what? That's a great I, I, idea. God, I will go ahead and do that because I don't want to drive any. I, I wouldn't want to drive after that. Um, yeah. I mean, I've been a part of accidents, but nothing, nothing of that sort. And you don't want to be on the road for a couple of days. That that changed me a lot. It left me with a lot of side effects. You know, my nerves. I get anxious for little things. I'm always nervous. Um, I drive very careful now. So mm -hmm. I am one of those guys that drive like an old man, you know, like At the a, speed limit. Yeah. yeah slow down for pedestrian. Around. Right. Yes. Turning um, signal. <laughs> yes. I put the good. Oh, yeah. sig you I'm a good driver. You were transformed. Mm -hmm. You were trying to yes. <laughs> And of course, um, I developed some nervous problems and I I don't know how to describe it. If somebody touched my my back and I don't know, it's there. I'm, I'm jumping. I'm I'm very jumpy, nervous. It's part of that. But has that affected your work I, at any point? Like is this something yeah. that affects you the worst when you right before you get on stage in Madison Square Garden? I mean, it's yeah, it's probably, not at a children's probably. birthday party. You're. I always been nervous, but that that particular accident put me 
put that nervous to the to the roof. Right. But I don't care, to be honest. It's something that I used to it now, and I don't care because I'm a lie. And Amen. like I say, every time I get nervous or every time I have a back pain, that reminds me that I'm here and I'm alive. And God saved my life. He gave me the, the capacity of look around, move yeah. the wheel, and make sure that nothing happened that day. And yes, I have I have some stuff, but I don't care because I'm alive. And yeah. Yeah. look, God had picked me to do this job. God has a purpose. Before the foundation of the word, he has my name right in the book. Whatever I'm going to be, all the tasks that I have to do, and I'm happy. I know that the, he had, had picked me. It's around almost 8 billions of human beings in the entire world. I just see it right now. Google it. <laughs> 7.951 billion people. And counting. And earth. Mm -hmm. And he picked Sadiel and put me in Houston to the to do this radio station, to open a brand new Christian radio station that is blessing many, many peoples. I have so many stories that I can tell you. I got, for example, one day I was, uh, when we started the station, we was short staff. So I have to, re uh, I'm used to voice track the weekends. And one of those days on a Friday, I rushed to go home, and I forgot to record the oh. Saturday. Oh, no. oh, my God. So when I wake up, I have this habit that I turn on the radio uh, to hear myself or whatever and do my things at home, and I hear four songs in the row that I don't hear anything. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. I forgot to voice track. <laughs> and I have ready, I have plans to go somewhere. Oh. And, and I have to change that. So I go to the station, all mad, moody, like a grumpy man, mm -hmm. I'm very mad. And when I it actually was in, not in this studio, in, in our, our first studio, I was recording. And in the phone line, it was it's blinking. It's the, we don't have a ringing sound because it's the studio. So you see a light. In the on the board but this this person was calling and calling and calling i was like oh i don't want to take any phone calls right now i'm <laughs> in a rush i want to leave i picked that phone call and the person was crying and i was mad i was moody i was grumpy in the moment so i say sorry give me one second i i say god please take out of this mood that i have give me this Changed me. I need to help this guy. I don't know what is going on, but please take take them the bad mood. Yeah. I don't know how to say. It. Sorry that I keep switching. Yo estaba de mal humor, y le pedí a Dios que me quitara el mal humor. Yeah. You were in so, a bad mood. You just happened to be in a bad mood because of you had to. You were supposed to be at a, buf a buffet somewhere, right, or at a brunch. Buñada. At a buñada, <laughs> and you had to go to work <laughs> on a Saturday. Yeah. Yes. Anybody. So, but I grabbed the phone. I talked to the guy and God put the words on my mouth and I say what I had to say to this time. He called sometimes and he's we're giving shout outs on air. He, he was on a point to take out his life. Oh man. He, he wasn't that point. He called as a last resource call the station to, for somebody to pray for him. And I pray for him and he's alive. So it was made to be me forgetting to voice track that day because yep. God has a plan for me to be there. Even mm -hmm. that I was grumpy and mad, he'd, he'd take it out. And when I get out of the station and I realize what I did, oh, let me let me say it right. What God did. Yeah, mm -hmm. he made you an offer he, you could refuse. And he used me mm -hmm. to do it. That's part of what now... The, why I'm the way I am right now, you know, I'm be changing little by little. Right. And another ex ex experience, we, we launched New York City, right? And when we launch, we open the lines so the people from New York call to the station and give a shout outs and all this stuff. And one of the phone calls, um, it was a lady crying. I forgot her name. 
right now. So bad. Um, when she she calls crying, and I was with Merca doing the morning show, and we asked her to stay on the phone, and we continue with music, and we start praying for her on the phone. This woman has neuropathy, diabetes, and she's on the bed. She don't, she's not able to walk. She lives in the Bronx, New York. So the, the, some people get to her apartment and steal everything that she has there. Oh. The food, the money. And because she's on the bed, she can do anything. And she called the cops and the cops go and can do anything for her, oh. right? So Mirka, and I think you guys hear that, that, on on CMB on Momentum, America shared the the we story. Did, yes. She did share this, this story with us. Yes, yeah, so please tell us. Yes, yeah, so so when we um I continue to call her every day, and behind the scenes, America was calling people in New York, pastors and people. In a week later, she calls again to a station, but she was crying, but not the same cry. Yeah, you know, she was crying by happiness. She was crying Here's happy it, with mm -hmm. blessing. You know, she was very blessed because she find the help. She get a, ra a little radio, and that's the way that she find out about us because she used to listen to an uh, English station. And when they, they take it away, her radio, she find a way to purchase another one and she don't remember the dial of the station, and but she find Bidonida by accident. And she heard the phone, she called us, and that's the way that God helped her, you know, through through Bidonida. So many stories and, and things that I can share right now, but I'm just gonna leave it there because it's it's you know, it's too many stories that I if I Mention everyone. We're gonna be here for another three well, hours. We'll, no, it's fine. We'll invite you over again, and that'd be that'd be the story. <laughs> you know, Sadiel storyteller, and a, another uh, hat that he wears throughout the day, on top but, of but, of award winning Evermoro Sadiel Castro. But like I say, it's a blessing. God handpicked me yep. to be here, and He handpicked you guys to be there. Yep. And and <laughs> we just have to be happy and and grateful to God that He. Use us, pick us to do this job. So yeah. amen to that. That's 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 only that I can say. So thank you guys. <laughs> it is a blessing to talk to Sadiel in Hispanic Heritage Month, but it is a blessing as we always close beyond the plate with a positive note. This comes from Shakira. I think you all know that name, right? We're celebrating Shakira, Hispanic Shakira. heritage. Shakira, Shakira. Uh, just a little background on on this uh, at seven. Uh, her father's business went bankrupt. It was a jewelry business. Um, and it plunged them into basically poverty. And she got inspired from seeing the worst uh, of children in these in these really, really bad conditions. And I think that's one of her stories in an interview that really turned her into helping others, right? And so she oh. comes up with this quote. She says, you have the power to make a difference. Together, we can lift our children out of poverty and give them the healthy, bright futures they deserve. Wow. Shakira, everyone. So yeah. that positive note, don't lie. That is a positive note, don't lie. Has <laughs> <laughs> anybody? <laughs> so you have the power to make a difference, everyone. Together we can lift our children. That's right. And children that doesn't have to apply to kids. It can be God's children, right? Which is everybody. And Amen. we can get them out of poverty, get them into healthy, brighter futures, which they deserve. And you're doing that, Sadiel. You're Bless doing it. that on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, even weekends. Thank you, Sadiel. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, Sadiel. guys, for inviting me to the Beyond the Plate. And right. it's a blessing for me to be here and hope to see you guys again soon. Yes, you will. Virtual fist bump, Sadiel. Virtual fist bump. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to Beyond the Plate. We love having you here. Keep up with us on Instagram and TikTok at beyondtheplate.podcast. And if you enjoy the show, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and give our videos a like. Just search Food for the Poor Beyond the Plate. Your support means the world to us. All right, folks. We'll see you on the next Beyond the Plate episode. I'm waving. Well <laughs>